Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayers and ended with prayers. Prayer is the master key. Hello, my brothers and sisters. I welcome you today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The topic for today is what do you do after prayers? Everybody loves to pray. The Muslim, the Hindu, the monks, the Christian, even Baba Laos, even Juju man, everybody loves to pray. The deal is, what do you do after prayers? Do you listen to the instruction? Do you listen to the word of knowledge? Do you check your own selves after prayers? Even when you're in the mode of prayer, are you away from people? Do you check who your circle of friends are? Do you know exactly what you ought to do? Prayer is the key to anything in this world. And after prayer, do you act? Do you go before to do what you ought to do? Do you check your own mind? Do you check your spirit? Are you in tune with the Holy Spirit? What do you do after prayers? You know, everybody loves a man of God to pray for them and to lay hands on them. But we have forgotten that the man of God is human as well. Have you asked yourself, after the man of God has prayed for you, what does he go to do? Do you check him? Do you look for him? Do you ask yourself questions? The Bible says pray without season. You can pray by yourself. You can talk to God by yourself. The veil was already broken. The blood of Jesus speaks for everybody. The grace of God speaks for everybody. The mercy of God is for everybody if you know how to seek for it. And of course he said, I will give mercy to whom I want. What do you do after prayers? Are you in repentance? Do you continue your old ways? Are you are you, are you conscious of your ways and your words? Do you beat your children senseless and leave a huge mark in their heart for the rest of their lives? Do you commit atrocities? Hmm. Prayer is supposed to renew you. It's supposed to bring your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit. You ought to be constantly in prayers. Not when you want or you need something from God. I want to talk about myself. I remember some time ago, I had gone into seven days prayers as I normally would. I think I'd uh, turned 40 or thereabouts. I can't recall. Yeah, I think it was about 40. And I was in church on the last day to break my fast. And three people came. They passed by me and said, Oh, madam, be careful. Of those people and I'm, I'm not one for you to tell me about someone to be careful about this because I believe everybody has a good thing inside of them which has really affected me because I don't listen about somebody saying about somebody so they came be careful be careful you know and you see the thing about prayer is God always wants us before something happens inside the prayer after the prayer and I paid dearly for it because I didn't listen because they were meant to destroy me and you know something prayer does never deceive if you're praying and right and you're not praying amiss you know um, in as much as prayer helps us in everything some people don't believe in prayer, which is fine. But inside of the prayer, is your pride cut enough? Is your anger cut enough? Is your loose tongue cut enough? You think you can abuse anybody, you can talk to anybody. You think because you're a prayer warrior, you can lash, lash. You've forgotten that the prayer that you're praying is not going anywhere. Your body your flesh, your spirit is supposed to be high with the antennas up like that. So that everything that's surrounding you, you know, and you can pray against all for them. If you're truly in prayers or you pray, you'll be cautious and spiritual to know that you need to now hold yourself in the armor of God and be watchful of where your feet take you. After prayers, you go to commit sexual immorality. 
and they sit for repentance again and again. Do you go to gossip, pull somebody down, spread rumors, and yet expect to receive answers to prayers? I mean, your neighbor does not have a child. Your neighbor is not married. You are praying and you go to abuse them. Where do you think your prayer is going? You go for seven days, 10 days, 15, 20 days. You come down. And then the first thing you do is, is to insult. You say the person is not good for you. Do you know whether that person was sent by God to do something for you? I mean, I'm the kind of person I pick up the phone and I call. How are you this and that? And sometimes I say, God, why am I calling this person? He says, my people pray, but they don't understand that I've answered them. I mean, I call you and then you start insulting me because of the way I spoke to you or, I, I, or something I said that you don't like. Have you forgotten that you have been praying and that thing that you have been praying for against was an answer from the person that has called you or is looking for you? You know, Joshua, his garment, his robe was going to be changed. As the angel was changing him in Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1, Satan was with him. <laughs> That's a problem with everybody. As you are praying, Satan is with him. To dislodge, to discard, to put forth something against you. Are you aware of that? Prayer is hard. But when your mind is renewed, is in tune, is washed with the blood of Jesus, even when the devil comes and he holds nothing against you, it's a sentence of heaven. Are you the type that you find it so difficult to forgive? You just have to destroy? You just have to collect your own pound of flesh? What prayer are you praying? Somebody comes and tells you, or maybe it's a man of God that you trust, it says, don't do this, don't do that. But you can't help it. This flesh is not to destroy. What do you do after prayers? <laughs> after prayers, what do you do? Do you go to visit the Babylon because the timing of God is too slow? Do you go to the soothsayers? Or hold on to an idol as you so that so to destroy another? Or you walk to and fall down the length of the earth? Look for him. Or her and to destroy them. When you finish praying, take care of this flesh. When you finish praying, even whilst you're praying, build with your foundation because the foundation rises up against us all the time. Let's kill ourselves not. Many pray in our knees, many don't use their Bible more anymore, they don't use the word. What about your heart? What is inside? Because I tell you, if I can pray now, I say, Lord, bless me. Make me rich. Make me the best woman on earth. It may not be at my own time, but it will be God's time. So what do I do? I wait. I wait until that point of time. And I key and I look and I check into the opportunities. I don't rush. What do you do after prayers? Do you go to that person? Do you go to that person? To that house? Do you sit in the church and insult your pastor? Do you go and sit in one corner and pretend that you are speaking in tongues to show off? God is watching us. He's checking your heart. He can see you. He will expose you when the time you are not expecting and it will come. God's will for us in Christ Jesus is to rejoice always and pray without season. Giving thanks in all circumstances and this thing can be found in us. What do you do after prayers? Do you know who you are praying with? Do you know the person you are praying with? Do you know what the person says? Do you know where the person has put something in their tongue? Are you spiritually discerned to know who you are praying with? They say corporate prayer is good. Yes. But do you know who and the environment of where you're doing your corporate prayer? Do you take charge 
o viernes a la noche. The person you're praying with, do you believe that they believe in the same thing? Do you have the same love for your God and the prayer you're praying? Above all, what do you do with the instructions given to you after prayers? Do you take heed or you discard? Or the person that has come to deliver the message doesn't look like somebody that can talk to you. Doesn't look like the person that can pray. Do you ignore those tiny messages because you do not feel that that person should tell you that thing? Have you forgotten God used the male horse to talk to a human being? Noah used the dog to check if the land was dry. So why ignore instructions and the still voice after prayers? Be wary, for the enemy seeks whom to devour, and he hates you when you pray without season. Oh, he does. So don't finish praying and just go and eat. Don't finish praying and then go and insult and join in rumor mongering. Don't finish praying and then you are picking your phone and you are talking, 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 talking. Relax. Read the word. Assimilate. The Holy Spirit is there. Right there as you are praying. He will speak to you. Because you are praying for a particular thing. And I pray that the Lord, who has given us all the power to pray without season, may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, be upon your mind, your soul, your spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. May the mercy of God prevail over our lives in Jesus' name. May we not pray and it is void. May we pray and the prayers are sent to heaven. I soak all your prayers that you may pray today. And always in the blood of Jesus. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.